walk with me. Yes, our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, even our creator. The I am reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The I am is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world is also established that it cannot be moved. The throne is established of old, and thou art from everlasting. He never changes. The floods have lifted up. Oh, Tata and Zambi, Sanini, Nanini, Yahweh, Yahuwah. We thank you. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. Yes, the people, the nations. And the I am on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Thy testimonies are sure. Holiness become thy house. And oh, my God, forever. Yes, God is mightier. Our God is reign. He reigns. He is mightier. He is mightier. He is mightier. There is no other mightier than our God. There is nothing man can create that can defeat God. No way. He tried swords. He tried building a whole tower to get to God. Being led of devils. Yes. And what was the whole result in it of that? Destruction. And God hold them in derision. Like, what are you doing? Yes. Oh, most holy. Sanini, Nanini, even Dr. Nzami. We thank you for all that you've done. We pray that through our works of faith. That we obtain your favor. Even as our father, even Abraham through his works of destroying idols that he hated because they were of no use. They were no good. They didn't hear. They were made of men's hands, just like religion. Men's ideals. Oh, most holy Sanini Nainini, deliver us from these ideals of men uh, back into your word, back into the way it should be. Give us the sacrifices that we should be doing back to us in this last and evil day. For they have taken away these things in our ways, have taken away the, even the sacrifice, the daily sacrifice. The sons of Levi are filthy. Yes, they do not walk in the ways that you have caused them to walk. And neither do we that we should sacrifice even in their absence. Yes, most holy, holy creator. We thank you that you are causing this thing to change and turn around that we one day can go into the wilderness, that we can go into a place where we can sacrifice a beautiful sacrifice, whether it's lambs, bullocks, red calves, whatever, that we might please you, that we might present not only from the sacrifice but from our hearts a sweet-smelling savor that will cause heaven to just become one big praise, even heard not only from there but even heard on earth. And our joy being full in you that we know we've done what you have prescribed just as you did in the old days where when they sacrificed with all their heart mind and soul your smoke filled the temple because you were loved yes 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 those days we look for good morning good afternoon good evening those of you on facebook YouTube and TikTok. We thank God for you, you, and you. And also, we thank God for those of you that have been with us since the beginning and those of you that have moseyed right on in and you have, I mean, you have stayed there. I mean, some of you came just as the beginning started, some you in between, and some you just a few days ago, maybe a few weeks ago. And we thank God for you and those of you that are about to even subscribe or follow. We thank God for you, too. Yes, 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 a beautiful day, a beautiful day. That was from Psalms 93, Psalms chapter 93, verses 1 through 5. And we thank the Most High for who he is, for he is great, and he is marvelous. Yes, marvelous in our eyes. Yes, I ain't talking about that Isis, I'm talking about God himself, marvelous in our eyes. A most excellent creator. Yes, I ain't worried about nobody being rejected. There are many men have been rejected for the testimony that they've held against the children of men who have perverted the way of the Most High. Yes, and we thank God for all of them. He sent judges throughout the years, even after that first hundred years of darkness, he sent judges. 
Yes, we're in, uh, we're walking in Jubilees chapter 30, 41, and we ended with verse 24, and we will continue with verse 25. And it reads that uh, they told him in a dream, the angel of presence said, we told them. There are many angels before the Most High that he sends to do or speak to those whom he, even the heirs of salvation, the heirs that should be of the remnant or the elect. That it was forgiven him because he supplicated earnestly and lamented and did not again commit it. And we talked about how that even everything that a person can do, how much they bow down before an altar or cry or weep or moan or holler. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness, you have to walk in forgiveness. Walking in forgiveness means not doing it again. That's what it is. When shall I say to the righteous in the day that he forsake his righteousness, that his righteousness will be remembered when he does that which is wicked? That's what God says. When shall I say to the wicked in the day that he does that which is right, that his wickedness will be remembered? God says these things. That's repentance. See, now, they, they, they taking you on a cakewalk. They, taking, they blowing smoke in your ear. Trying to make you think that you got some salvation and that you got some forgiveness. You have no forgiveness. If you're still doing the same thing and you go repent over it. You see, this is the fallacy of these false religions or these false people. They would go and say, oh, you just, every time you do it, just keep having forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. You know, the blood of Jesus, God did not sacrifice Jesus for you. Jesus wasn't a sacrifice. He was martyred. He was murdered. Or this person they called Jesus. Yes, well, whoever, whatever his name is, we are in confusion of that because there are so many names that he had. We can look through all the scriptures, but many of the scriptures have been manipulated by the heathen and those who were chosen by even satanic forces to do their bidding. Yes, and so we're here. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. In verse 25, he received forgiveness because he turned from his sin. That's what forgiveness is. You got to get it right. Forgiveness is walking in forgiveness. You have, he did not commit it. He walked in forgiveness because he did not commit he did not commit that sin again. He was sorry to the point where it's just like a child that had been burnt by fire dread. He don't want to go near fire no more. And from his ignorance, for he transgressed greatly before our God. Now, God knows your heart. He knows those of you, oh, I'm asking forgiveness. Then you go back and do the same thing. I'm asking forgiveness. A few days later, you're doing the same thing again. Oh, I'm asking forgiveness. Uh, it doesn't work like that. You've been deceived. You will die in your sin. Now, he says now, and everyone that acted thus, everyone who lieth with his mother-in-law, let them be burnt with fire that he might burn therein. For there is uncleanness and pollution upon them. With fire, let them burn them. This is what he's saying. Don't lay with your father's wife or your son's wife. Even those of you that walk out of your gender, don't do it. You still got a lot to go through. And do thou command the children of Israel that there be no uncleanness among them, for everyone who lieth with his daughter-in-law or with his mother-in-law hath wrought uncleanness with fire, let them burn. The man who hath lain with her, and likewise the woman, he will turn away wrath from the punishment of Israel. You see, one thing about it. Your sin will get your nation judged. This is what God's saying. You bring, you bring havoc upon Israel. Those who are walking right can't do things because you are weak linked to the devils that have tempted you and have drawn you, you with the lust that they have generated in you. You brought uncleanness within your nation. Regardless of what nation you come from, when you do those things that God says not do because all your forefathers have known the Most High at one time or another. And you just steadily heap sin upon sin, transgression upon transgression against those things what God have told you not to do. And you know it. But you just 
push about it. You do things that are so nasty and ugly and hideous against not only other nations, but against your own also. This is why he tells them to put that person away or do them just as dirty because he hates it vehemently. 27, and unto Judah, we said that his two sons had not lain with her. For this reason, his seed was established for a second generation and would not be rooted out. Now, this is the reason right there. That's why he put there his son's seed. Now, for in the singleness of I, he had gone and sought for punishment, namely, according to the judgment of Abraham, which he led, which he had commanded his sons, Judah, had sought to burn her with fire. Now we're in chapter 42. Now we understand. I'm not going to go that way no more. We, we're into another subject here. Now in the first year of the third week of the 45th Jubilee, that's 49 times 45, okay? The first year of the third week, okay? Get it right. Famine began to come in the land and the rain refused to be given to the earth for none whatever fail no rain and the earth grew barren but in the land of Egypt there was food for Joseph had gathered the seed of the land in the seven years of plenty and preserved it and the Egyptian came to Joseph and that he might give them food he opened the storehouses there was the grain of the first year and he sold it to the people of the land for gold now you have to realize that this is how this is how the heathen and the devils have taken what we call this corporate thing where one man is getting rich. This here, in this turn, this was for a reason. But they have taken this thing where one man gets rich off of the degradation of others. It's called capitalism. Yes. I mean, this one man, he, whether you got a sword, broken toe, and you need help, or you got, or you got a, uh, you're down, and here you are, you may be demonically even possessed, some demonically for a fee. <laughs> because one thing they have learned, that you can beat a demon out of a person. They, they have shown that many in the South America. They beat them. They can't stand buffeting. Now, Seven years of plenty had preserved it. And the Egyptians came to Joseph that they might give him food and open the storehouse. And now he said, now the famine was very sore. After he gave him all that and gave, he got all that gold for Pharaoh, Pharaoh getting rich. He's eating corn, corn mash, corn this, corn that. Just like you was listening to that movie Forrest Gump. Well, peanut this, peanut that, or shrimp, shrimp kebab, shrimp, shrimp, whatever. Uh, unclean shrimp. Now, he says, and it was very sore, and Jacob heard that there was food in Egypt. See, this was, this, was, this was for a reason. God wanted to bring, he used this circumstance. He caused it. And see, this is the same thing that they would do. Many of them have studied the scriptures. You have to realize your enemy studies these scriptures and how to know how to manipulate you. He calls, he tried to do like God. He causes the problem. Then he comes up with the answer. God does this for a reason because he's working toward a certain end. Yes, their end is their own thing. He caused the problem of all kind of things from the way we think to the way we look at things, even for his own people. See, this is done through the whore of revelation. She has known these things, this wisdom that is wrought in that the word teaches. And she has studied this book of Jubilees, the book of Enoch. But you couldn't have it. No, you couldn't. And Joseph recognized him. He said, and he sent his ten sons that they should procure food for him in Egypt. But Benjamin, or Benoni, didn't, he did not sin. And the ten sons of Jacob arrived in Egypt among those that went there. And Joseph recognized him, but they did not recognize him. No, are you talking about a black man, or if, jo if Joseph was a white man, in Egypt, and Egypt was black, how could that even, or Arab, I mean, he would stand out like a sore thumb, you know? <laughs> he would stand out like a sore thumb. 
So you had to say all of Africa was all Arab looking or white looking. Doesn't make sense. Foolish. Don't you dare even come up. You might as well just keep scrolling if you, that's what you're going to do. Because it's true. Foolish are your claims. Now, even if those of your own hue would say it's foolish to claim that certain thing. Those countries were colonized by you. And Joseph recognized them, but they did not recognize him. They were all the same hue, the same hair, the same, I mean, body composition. Many of them were very muscular young men who would sit up there and, you know, they, they you know, young men worked. They did jobs. By the time we get about 40 and 50 years old, we done lost it all just like a woman. <laughs> But anyway, in Egypt, Joseph recognized him, but they did not recognize him. Verse 5. And he spake unto them and questioned them, and he said unto them, Are ye not spies? For I have come to explore the reproaches of the land. And he put them in ward. No, just put them in a room, not prison. And after that, he set them free again and detained Simeon alone and sent off his nine brothers. And he filled their sacks with corn and he put their gold in their sacks and they did not know. He loved his brother still. He knew why he was sent there. And he commanded them to bring their younger brother for they had told him their father was living and their younger brother and their younger brother. And verse 9, they went up from the land of Egypt and they came to the land of Canaan and they told their fathers all that they had been fallen them and how the I am of the country had spoken roughly to them and had seized Simeon and then they, till they should bring Benoni. And Jacob, even Jacob said, me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not. Simeon also is not. And ye will take Benoni away? On me hath your wickedness come. I mean, he was wroth. And he said, my son will not go down with you, lest perchance he falls sick. For their mother gave birth to two sons. And one hath perished, and this one also will ye take from me? If perchance he took a fever on the road, ye would bring down my old age with sorrow unto death. In other words, this is the son of my old age. This is my baby. For he saw that their money had been returned to every man in his, in his sack. For this reason, he feared to send him. And the famine increased and became sore in the land of Canaan. And all the land, save in the land of Egypt, for many of the children of the Egyptians had stored up their seed for food. From the time when they saw Joseph gathering the seed together and putting it in storehouses and preserving it for the years of famine. And the people of Egypt fed themselves thereon during the first year of their famine. But when Israel saw that the famine was very sore in the land and there was no deliverance, he said unto his sons, go again and procure food for us that we die not. And they said, we shall not go unless our youngest brother go with us. We shall not go. Whew. God is good. God, he knew the heart of a Kobe, even Jacob. He knew that this man would not move. As long as he can get, get corn and everything and do what he had to do, he wasn't going to go there. So what did he start creating these things through Joseph? Joseph wanted his family. He wanted to see his family's delivered he wanted to see them saved now this is not from enemy from famine God created the situation and God created the solution this is the secret not of God God shows his whole thing here but the capitalists and those who come into your countries and take and cause all kind of havoc create the problem and then tell your solution. And with that, we're going to say. No matter how life goes, one thing I know.